today we will be discussing about lecture number 5 that is types of tillage preparatory tillage factors affecting preparatory cultivation after cultivation and puddling these are the topics we are going to discuss today so coming to topics the tillage operations are mainly grouped into two types so that is based on the time at which at which they are carried out so it is two types one is preparatory cultivation another one is after cultivation so whatever the operations are carried out before sowing of the before sowing of the crop so these all are comes under preparatory cultivation means the operations which are carried out for land preparation and uh, seed pre seed bed preparation so these all are comes under preparatory cultivation and second one after cultivation so what are the uh, uh, farming operations are followed after sowing of the crop so those are comes under after cultivation it means the intercultural operations like weeding fertilizer application uh, agricultural chemical applications or any uh, irrigation application so these all are comes under after cultivation so generally the primary tillage can be called as ploughing and secondary tillage can be called as harrowing so here you can see the mouth board plough so these are the common plough we can we can uh, we can see uh, for uh, tillage operations so this mouth board plough at a time it can do four four types of operations so that is cutting of the soil lifting of the soil and turning of the soil and uh, pulverizes the soil so this is mouth board plough whereas come to disc plough so instead of the uh, shares in mouth board plough in disc plough you can see the concave shape of discs so these discs cut the soil and break the soil and push it sideways so that is the disc plough and rotavator rotavator also you can see different uh, different number of blades so these all are cut the soil and pulverizes the soil and cultivator so generally we can see this uh, uh, implement for the tillage operations and for uh, cutting of the soil so uh, cutting of the soil and coming to factors influencing preparatory cultivation preparatory tillage the first one the previous crop grown so what are the what are the crops grown previously in the respective field so that that should be keep into the mind so it may be the stubbles which are uh, left over in the field of the previous crop so those should be influence the till uh, til influence the preparatory tillage so stubbles of previous crop influence the tillage suppose for example red gum cotton stubbles are very deep rooted so the those soils are required deep tillage to remove the uh, previous crop stubbles and second one the crop to be grown the crops like sorghum can be grown with rough tilt for very small seeded and crops like tobacco chillies etc fine tilt is required and deep tillage is required for the crops like tuber crops and sugar cane so that is second one and coming to the third third one types of soils so clay soils as we know it is a heavy heavy soil so it require so the clay soil can be ploughed only within a narrow range of soil moisture and the power which is required for the clay soil for tillage operations are very very high and light textured soils for example sandy soils can be ploughed under a wide range of soil moisture and it required less power so that is types of soil and coming to the climate and deep tillage is not permitted in shallow soils because in low rainfall areas it leads to rapid drying and loss of stored soil moisture so deep cultivation is possible in high rainfall areas and next one types of type of farming so intensive cropping means more number of crops are in, uh, in more number of crops like mixed mixed cropping intercropping so these all are requires intensive tillage so these are the factors which influence the of uh, uh, factors which influence the tillage so uh, next one inter cultivation so tillage operations done between the crop rows with the objectives of first to destroy the weeds and to form as a soil as a layer on the so layer on the soil surface so it is a mulch we can say to form a soil mulch and to prevent the cracking of the soil and to to prevent the crust formation also so inter cultivation starts from very early stage of the crop that is 2 to 3 weeks after sowing of after sowing and short duration crops require 2 to 2 uh, to 3 inter cultivation where long duration crops require require 3 to 4 weeks and next one after cultivation so it includes inter cultivation and various special operations carried out on, on a standing crop 
so it includes the first one thinning and gap filling so thinning means it is nothing but the removal of excess number of plants so that is nothing but the thinning and gap filling means wherever the uh, seeds are not uh, seeds are uh, not germinated so in that places we can um, we, uh, we can fill the gaps by by uh, by uh, tra by transplanting of seedlings or by sowing of the seeds so that is gap filling so next one roguing in crops for seed purpose so roguing means generally uh, for off types or weeds which are present in the field so these all are leads to the mixtures uh, mixture so removal of this off types is nothing but the roguing so next one acting up in crops like sugarcane banana and groundnut so acting up is not nothing but so keeping up the soil around the around the around the base of the plant so generally it will give the mechanical uh, it will give the um, mechanical anchorage to the uh, mechanical anchorage to the plant so to reduce the lodging so these all are so it is nothing but the earthing up next one desuckering operation in banana so in banana banana plantation so generally we can observe the uh, main stem uh, beside the main stem so there is a sucker so removal of the suckers is nothing but the desuckering operation in banana so next one wrapping and propping in sugarcane so whatever the dried leaves are dried leaves or bottom leaves are there so those all are can be removed from the plant as well as so these all are can be prepared like a rope like structures and tied the sugarcane sets so to give the mechanical uh, strength uh, to reduce the lodging so that is nothing but the wrapping and propping in sugarcane next one nipping in castor so to mainly to reduce the vegetative growth in the vegetative growth in the castor crop so generally we have to remove the uh, top uh, top vegetative branches top uh, top uh, this one so that is nothing but the nipping in castor so next one topping trimming so and desuckering in tobacco or basil leaves also can be removed these all are comes under intercultivation and defoliation in cotton and hand pollination in sunflower hand pollination means by hand only we can rub the uh, we can rub the uh, sugarcane uh, sugarcane head for increase the pollination so it is nothing but the hand pollination and fertilizer application and irrigation also comes under after cultivation practices only so you can you see a few images uh, regarding the intercultural operations so first one earthing up in, uh, earthing up in sugar cane mainly to keep the soils at around the so around the base of this around the base of the plant so it will give the mechanical uh, anchorage to the plant to reduce the lodging so it is acting up acting uh, up and this is this is desuckering so these are these are the suckers so removal of the suckers from the main stem so it is not, nothing but the desuckering and wrapping and propping in sugar cane so whatever the dried leaves are there or bottom leaves are there so those all are can be uh, these all are can be removed and prepared like a rope like structures and these all are used for the tying of the sugar cane sets to reduce the lodging so that is wrapping and propping in sugar cane and topping in uh, topping topping in tobacco to mainly to mainly uh, uh, means so uh, allow the lateral branching in tobacco we have to remove the to, uh, means we have to remove the uh, means so uh, terminal uh, terminal uh, vegetative portions so that is nothing but the topping in tobacco and defoliation in cotton is nothing but the removal of the leaves and hand pollination in sunflower so this is a sugarcane head so to improve the pollination uh, as it is uh, to improve the uh, pollination so generally the um, uh, um, the uh, sugarcane heads can be rubbed with the ma rubbed manually so it is nothing but the hand pollination in sunflower and next important operation that is puddling so as we know the rice growth and yield are higher when the uh, rice is grown under submerged conditions okay so maintaining standing water throughout the crop period is not possible without this puddling operations it is a specially operation generally we are following in case of the rice so puddling is nothing but the plowing of the land in standing water so so it is crea it creates an impervious layer below the surface to reduce the deep percolation losses of water to provide soft seed bed for planting rice so the main aim of puddling to create the impervious layer impervious layer below the soil surface impervious layer means it will not allow the water into the soil profile so it is nothing but impervious layer so percolation means water allow water 
water when uh, downward flow of water um, in so um, uh, below or than the soil profile we can say percolation so these all percolation losses can be removed by maintaining the puddling operation so this puddling operation can create the uh, impervious layer below the soil surface so puddling operation consists of plowing repeatedly in standing water until the soil becomes soft and muddy so this is uh, the puddling is simply is nothing but the plowing of the land repeatedly in standing water until the soil becomes soft and mud so initially 5 to 10 cm of 10 cm of water is applied depending on the water status of the soil to bring the soil moisture status into saturation and above and for, for and for the first plowing is carried out after 3 to 4 days another 5 cm of water is applied and later after 2 to 3 days second 2 uh, to 3 days second plowing is also carried out so like that we can we can like that farmer can follow so 2 to 3 plow 2 to 3 puddling operations until the until the soil becomes very soft and muddy so this is nothing but the puddling so after this one so planting and leveling board is run over the field so to bring the uh, to keep the soil into level to to know the whether puddling is throughout or not so a handful of mud is taken to the hand and pressed so if it if the mud is flows freely through the fingers if there is no hard lumps puddling is considered as uh, to be thorough so unlike in other tillage operations puddling aims at destroy and destroying soil structure so this one you have to understand very very important the individual soil particles like sand silt clay are separated during the puddling operation so the soil particles separated from the puddlings and settles later so first the sand particles reach the bottom over which silt particles settle and finally the clay particles fill the pores and thus makes the impervious layer over the compacted soil so you have to just try to understand so when the soil is repeatedly uh, plowing in the standing water automatically all the soil particles are separated from the soil aggregates soil aggregates okay so once the uh, uh, thorough puddling operations are over so automatically the soil particles so soil has a uh, three three important particles so one is uh, sand another one is silt another one is clay so sand is a higher um, uh, higher weight compared to the silt and silt is a uh, more than hi higher weight compared to the clay particles so for easy understanding when we are taking a water in the a bottle and taking of all soil particles like sand silt clay and just st stir the stir the all soil particles in the bottle so automatically after after uh, stopping of stirring so automatically first the sand particles first reach the bottom and later the silt particles reach the Uh, reach over the uh, sand particles and finally the clay particles which are very uh, very um, uh, uh, very small particles are light in weight so these all are finally reach at the uh, uh, reach at the uh, uh, these these all are fi these finally reach at the uh, surface okay so like that it create an impervious layer so this this is called an impervious layer so because of the presence of this impervious layer the water will not allowed into the soil profile so this is the main aim of so uh, puddling operation so the disadvantage is so because of this uh, separation of soil particles from soil aggregates we can say that puddling operations destroy the soil structure so you can see here few images puddling is followed with the cattle and puddling with followed with the tractor uh, tractor cage wheels and puddling with the rotavators and after puddle the field so automatically the the soil is very soft and mud and we can run a, a, a level board so to bring the soil uh, so to bring the soil is a uh, uh, uniform level so after puddling so this is a puddled field and uh, after this one so we can go for the different types of plantation different types of transplantations so first one manual transplantation so you can see and another one is ma machine transplanting also can be followed so this is briefly regarding the lecture number 4 thank you